Hi Moto friends and welcome to my channel. So today we are going to talk about how to plan your next ride for long tours. So let me give you this uh, fair warning that this vlog includes very detailed and almost exhaustive level of information about touring on a bike. After doing extensive research and by my personal experience, I have compiled and expressed a detailed view and perspective how to plan for any kind of tours. So friends, let me ask you one question. What does long touring mean to you? So how exactly you classify a long tour? It's based on following factors. It is kilometers or miles traveled. It, it's based on terrain. It's based on time and it's based on geography. So based on terrain, it can be on road and off road. On road can be highways and highways mixed with city roads. Off road can be trails which are uh, rocky, sandy, muddy, etc. And uh, this can be affected by seasons like snow, rain, which can cause traction issues. So you have to modify your bike accordingly. So based on days, months and even year, it can be your long tour can be for a few days, weeks, months or years. So uh, for months and years need a lot of time and uh, planning and uh, you have to be adaptive and to uh, reschedule or postpone uh, your plans because no one can see that uh, that far into the future and you can't necessarily plan everything so ha you have to be adaptive based on uh, cross countries so i would like to mention here that a cross country trip you have to besides uh, preparing your bike and yourself you have to get authority permission such as a passport is needed a visa should be approved and for how many days uh, your visa is approved you have to stay till those many days if you overstay uh, there there is an issue and uh, you should be aware of the countries you are going uh, of their laws and regulations especially motor regulations uh, like uh, s speeding and uh, like how what is the highway speeds of particular roads you should follow which side of lane you should drive or ride uh, and mostly how s signs uh, there are different signs in different countries uh, for different things so you have to educate yourself most importantly i would like to add this that please don't consider your mobile as a gps device when you are on a cross-country trip as you won't find a signal and you will find lots of trouble and problem uh, for getting a proper direction so you should have a dedicated gps device in which it, it has a pre-map of that country installed so you don't run into any issues or difficulties regarding directions the kind of bike you ride, does it really matter? So to answer that, bikes can be classified into roughly five types. One is tourer, adventure bikes, adventure tourer, sports, and sports tourer. So a tourer is ideal for highway use. For long highway rides, tourer is the best. An adventure bike is great for its off-road capabilities. An adventure tourer can be used both for highway and off-roading. Sports bike is the best bike f you can take to a track, but it's very hard for long tours. A sports tourer can be tracked and can be taken for long rides. Does displacement matter? Short answer, absolutely yes. Displacement is usually measured in cc, which is cubic centimeter. So the bike's displacement can be around 125 to 200 cc, 300 to 400 cc, and 600 to 1000 cc or a liter class. While 125 to 200 cc are best for city use owing to its less weight, and it can be also used for short rides up to 200 kilometers. A 300 to 400 cc bikes are best for city as well as highway rides and highway rides can range from 200 to 600 kilometers very comfortably 
for 600 to a liter class is uh, not preferable for everyday city commute but they are extremely reliable and relaxed uh, on highways and which makes it the best for highways and long tours so thanks for watching guys please stay tuned for next on moto science episode until then goodbye